I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're taking a look at Faith, Hope, and Dr. Vangelis. It's written by a wonderful author. His name is Stephen Gordy. This compelling narrative explores the life of Lucas Vangelis. He is a hospice physician grappling with his own deep wounds while serving as a bridge between life and peaceful death. Amid his struggles and a profound spiritual journey, Lucas embarks on a quest to find his successor, unraveling layers of forgiveness and destiny. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Prime 7 Media for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his very powerful book. The links are below this interview. Steve, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you, Logan, for having me. My pleasure. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind Faith, Hope, and Dr. Vangelis. Okay. Uh, both my mother-in-law and my mother were in hospice care in the last weeks of their lives. Hmm. And one of the things I observed is that hospice care is a compassionate alternative to what used to be the rule for how people died. Hmm. Uh, and it was further provoked by the fact that I suffered a series of deaths of people very close to me. Uh, four of them occurred in a very short period of time. And it led me to wonder, what do you do if you stare at this every day? If it's your career, your calling? Yeah, I, I a lot of careers are like that. What's it like to walk into a jail every day? What's it like as a as a prison guard? What's it like to work with people who are at the end of their lives every day, like hospice physicians and nurses and the aides and so forth? So they do see a different side of life that you and I don't see. So this was a great um, pondering on your part and uh, and very, very well executed. Did you do research for the book? Was it all out of your imagination? Tell us a little bit about coming up with the actual story. Well, uh, it originally started out as a shorter piece, and I showed it at a writer's conference here in South Carolina to uh, a publisher, and uh, she said this could be a longer piece. This would really support the, the weight of a, a full novel, mm. and so I went, and instead of going dealing with a very compressed time frame, I wound up going back to the start of the story, which starts about 15 or about five years before the denouement. Mm. Uh, I had to do a good bit of research on cancer because although I have, my wife and I have both lost family members to cancer, I wanted to get down into the mechanics of treating it and what it does to you. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, very, feels very real, very, very powerful. You can tell you did your homework on this. Tell us a little bit about Lucas. He's both a healer and a spiritual medium. Tell us why you decided upon those roles for him. Because, uh, well, I read many years ago, and I'm sure that probably many of your viewers have read on Death and Dying by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. Mm -hmm. uh, now, while you don't have to treat it as gospel, the notion of actually going through phases at the end of one's life has always intrigued me. I am now in my seventies, mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to, I hope a peaceful completion of my own life. Mm -hmm. But, uh, the fact that we had these deaths in my family made me want to explore the link between spiritual health, physical health, and what it does to you at the end of your life as the end of your life approaches. Lucas has been doing it for 20 years. So he's kind of a master. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And when you do lose someone, you do ponder your mortality quite a bit, whether it's your mother, your father, um, whoever it is, when you lose someone close to you, you get that feeling of, well, what's the end gonna be like? Um, is this all there is? Uh, why are we put here on earth? And uh, I think your book grapples with a lot of those questions, right? That's correct. Of course, Lucas's gift actually comes from his mother, uh, who becomes a healer herself 
in, a, in an unlikely way. And she passes the gift on to Lucas, also on to his twin brother. But his twin brother never realizes that he has the gift. And hmm. he takes a very different path in, in his life. One of the things that Lucas experiences is that he has to come to a reconciliation with his brother. Hmm. After his brother, years after his brother is gone. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very powerful, um, that aspect of the story. The spectral visitations in the book offer a unique dimension to Lucas and his character and his journey. Tell us a little bit about those who come to him in dreams and so forth. Okay. Lucas comes from a culture where the boundary between life and death is not hard and fast in the way that we think of it as being. And by being open to the reaching out from particularly his mother mm. and others, he gains the ability to appreciate what the end of life looks like from their perspective, which is an essential part of his knowledge in counseling and helping those uh, that he is treating as the end of their lives approach. Uh, the spectral visitations actually are an element that was suggested by this publisher mm. that I mentioned, uh, who suggested you need a way of showing the reader how Lucas perceives the situation and how he knows how to give guidance to uh, people who are in his hospice. Yeah, well, I think it was good advice because it's very, very effective. And again, people who are close to death, they think often have dreams of the people they lost coming to them, giving them message, messages, communicating to them and so forth. This is a powerful story. Have you envisioned this perhaps as a series or a movie? I think it might do better as a, uh, as a series or perhaps a mini series uh, rather than a movie because one of the things, and this is uh, being an educator throughout most of my career, uh, is don't ask the reader to think too much. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to accomplish the story within the boundaries of a movie of an hour and a half or two hours yeah. might be asking them a little much, but a series might actually get them to thinking and thinking about how they feel about these things. Exactly. It would flush out the subject matter much, much better if you did six or eight episodes in a series as opposed to one film, that's for sure. So Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, if you're listening, this would be an awesome movie, that's for sure, <laughs> or a series of uh, TV right. series, rather. Let me ask you this. The theme of forgiveness runs deeply throughout the book. Tell us a little bit about why that's important. Because... Uh... Lucas, like many other people who have reached a, a late stage of their life, lives, uh, carry some hurts that he has never really managed to, to get over because he has not learned how to forgive mm. the people who have hurt him and also the people that he has hurt because he needs to, to ask their forgiveness for the way he treated them. Yeah. Uh, that's part of spiritual healing. And whether you view it from a conventionally religious standpoint or just as a part of good psychological health, mm. learning how to forgive, learning how to give forgiveness, how to accept forgiveness is important. It's part of what makes Lucas's story as powerful as it is. Absolutely. Timmy's story is quite interesting as well. Tell us a little bit about how his character evolves and uh, what his role signifies for the future of healing that's portrayed in your book. Yes, because at the beginning of the book, Lucas begins to get, the, well, he gets the spectral visitation from his mother mm -hmm. that says, you will have a successor. Basically, you have to go and find him. A few weeks after this experience, he goes to a veterans reunion and he meets two veterans that he met during World War II. Mm. Unbeknownst to him at the time, one of those veterans is will be the great-grandfather of Timmy. Mm. Uh, 
And he has a special relationship with his great grandson. It's not remote as you would think mm -hmm. a, a, a gap of an age like that. He imparts his own wisdom to Timmy and he gives Timmy assurance, kind of the assurance of his presence, even after he's gone, that uh, he has the gift and that he will grow into, uh, into learning how to use the gift. At the end of the story, when Timmy is standing by his mother's coffin, he sees her, which is his indication that he has broken through and now can reach out. Yeah. Beyond. Yep. It was a great evolution of a character, a great um, full circle of the story. I thought it was very, very effective indeed. The name of the book is Faith, Hope, and Dr. Vangelis. It's written by Stephen Gordy. It is a powerful book that explores the life of a hospice doctor grappling with his own deep wounds while serving as a bridge between life and peaceful death. It's an amazing story. It's almost an adventure in a way, uh, the journeys that these characters go through. And it'll help you perhaps ponder a little bit significantly about the meaning of life, the meaning of death, afterlife, and what we can do to comfort those who are dying. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Well, I appreciate the chance to talk with you. I appreciate your time, sir. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight.